Thanks again for having me, Andy. <laughs> uh, it's been a year, right, since we last spoke. And I was thinking coming out of this year's new front, you know, how much really has changed versus a year ago or even over the course of the 14 years which, uh, in which we've been at this. I think um, in a lot of ways, this year's new front was a convergence of so much of what we're seeing now. You know that 14 years ago when we established the new fronts, it really was to give digital video its own place in the sun um, prior to so many of the TV ad dollars at the time that were being committed at the upfronts. But I think there's now such a blurring of the line between what is digital video ad opportunity now with streaming and connected television and everything that we're seeing and then true upfront video and other marketplace video, this convergence is um, now, I think it'll be interesting to see just how many years we have a new front versus an upfront. We're now seeing other forms of upfronts coming forward. So um, I, I think video and content opportunities now, there's a huge convergence that Maybe it's time just to be talking about that truly as one platform and one set of conversations, as many of the players are definitely converging in all of the platforms. Now, Joey, tell us a little bit about what you see as kind of uh, your brand marketers um, uh, concern, interest, reluctance, enthusiasm. Um, what do they want to get out of, you know, connected TV? It, it, it's, it's really come up pretty quick. And where, where do you think things stand from the perspective of your clients? Um, certainly, I think coming into this year's new front, there were a lot of things that I was looking for that our clients were looking for. Um, so one, I think I would be remiss if I didn't start out by saying that diversity and inclusion was something that all of our clients were looking for more inventory, more opportunities. Um, they're getting a lot of, I would say, pressure and encouragement to spend more with diverse audiences, but there aren't enough opportunities out there. So I think what we saw this year was a true commitment by so many um, of our partners, both in front of the camera, behind the camera, to put diversity and inclusion front and center in both programming and opportunities and the production staff. Um, so you saw a lot of, um, you know, announcements coming out for original programming, certainly, but also for our clients to be able to align themselves with some really important diversity content going forward. So that was one area. Um, streaming, you know, when I think back, Andy, last year, our conversation was about who were the winners and losers uh, in, in um, streaming services. And you know which models, ad-supported or subscription-based, would win out. Which platforms had the best original content coming? And I think we had that conversation too because we had this assumption that as consumers there would be a limited set of streaming services that they would sign on to, or that they would have great first mover or some sort of other loyalty advantage. I think we're seeing now that there is just an insatiable appetite for content, um, for the number of streaming services that people are willing to sign on to, and also maybe a lack of loyalty. They'll come in and out of certain platforms based on you know, new original content, et cetera. And you saw even some new entrants like a Roku, for example, I know you follow, um, for new entrants into original content. I do think you have to talk about COVID and production, limitations that have been changing now the face of our ability to quickly um, produce really high level premium content, A-list stars are signing on in new ways. And there's just now an abundance of opportunities for our clients. And I think it's never more, been a more exciting time, I think, to now, again, think about streaming as part of someone's core mix um, of opportunities and content and get brands front and center in the development of shows and also the advertising opportunities alongside it. Jody, you've worked with KitchenAid, a big client of yours in the new front. This is the second year. Tell us about this year's uh, presentation, how it was constructed and what you hope people will take away from it. Absolutely. So this year, we once again featured um, a content series that we did with our client KitchenAid. It was produced together with Reese Witherspoon's production company, Hello Sunshine. 
Um, so we had a four part digital series. It was hosted by um, an actress, Christina Milian, who was fabulous. What she did in each of the four parts is we took one of uh, Reese Witherspoon. She has a book club, Reese's book club. We took a beloved author um, who in their respective books had um, a dish or a cuisine that was very key moments or part of um, the message of that book. And we paired each of those authors with a leading female chef. And in each of the series uh, episodes, we created a dish that was based on that book. Um, and the conversation was just fabulous. It really showed also the place that KitchenAid could play in bringing those experiences and matching what was both, you know, a wonderful story, diverse perspectives, but also the importance that um, that dish and the food played in the importance of telling that story through the author's eyes.